Yeah, go for it. I'm recording. Okay, yeah. okay cool. Number 99, Wayne Gretzky has the puck. He's skating up and down the ice. Deeks are two demons. Flick move. Shoots. Shoots high. Goes glove pass. Scores! Welcome to Flashback 64. That was probably the most uh, energetic. Oh, fuck. The net's on fire. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good enough. That's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> it was Oops. really it was the uh, emotion that got it all across <laughs> yeah. Dude. welcome everyone back to flashback 64 the chronological nintendo 64 podcast i'm gooey joined as always by mckenna hey mckenna hello and we are joined again by our pal Connor. What's up, Connor? Happy to be here. And joined for the very first time, we have our good friend, my virtual theater buddy, uh, from Zelda Dungeon, from Omega Metroid, the Zelda cast, we have Andy Spiteri. Hey, what's up, Goo? What's up, gang? Our past few episodes, we every guest we've had was... Born in 1995. Oh, God. <laughs> and <Kill> so... <laughs> Spoiler, I am not born in 1995. Yes, it's good to have someone uh, just slightly older. Not much older. Yeah. You're not old, though. But I, I, feel, I feel pretty old. But you lived I, through... Yeah. You've lived through some of this. Yeah. yeah. What are, I think you, to really get a good perspective, you're going to need to get people from all decades. So I'm yeah. really waiting for the episode that you have an 83-year-old on. <laughs> have, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. 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 For Gex. Yeah. I'll have parents on. Yeah, I'll yeah. have my, uh, my friend whose house I played Gex at. I'll get his dad on. There you go. <laughs> Track Heck him yeah. down. That'd be a great show. What is this lizard? I mean, <laughs> Andy, what, what do you remember of uh, 1996? Um, <laughs> what do I remember in 1996? <laughs> Let's see. I would have been in grade four. Mm. Uh, I think grade four. Um, I. Uh, I, it's kind of a downer. I'm sorry to even bring up my. I remember my my grandparents died in 1996. Oh, uh, so so I'm sorry to bum everybody out, but that that was a thing. And and honestly, like not to sound like a homer or anything here, but like I remember the N64 man. That was big time, big news, like big business. Uh, so yeah. I definitely remember that. And I remember, as I'll I'll talk about a little bit later, we took a cruise. My family and I took a cruise to Alaska. Which uh, I have I have a story about the very game we're covering today. You said you said Nintendo sixty four was was big for you though. What do you remember of of that console? How, where did it come into your life? Um, so I I didn't get uh, an N sixty four for myself until uh, nineteen ninety seven, and and I think I want to say it was a Christmas gift. I'm I'm pretty sure it was Christmas nineteen ninety seven. So I was a little bit late to the whole N64 bandwagon. And mm -hmm. and my first, like the first game that I owned was Diddy Kong Racing. And it's like one of my favorite games, like to this day, like I love that game so much. And I played a lot. My buddy, Kevin Lane, who lived a couple blocks down, he had Diddy Kong Racing too. So I remember playing a lot of that at his place and like a lot of Mario Kart 64. Um, and I guess like at, at this point, I think Goldeneye was out too, which was, I mean, like, the thing to do as I'm sure you and your friends probably did like, you know, like mm. get into, uh, get into Aztec, get us some proximity mines, no odd job. Like that, that was like a pretty big <laughs> thing. So, uh, that was, that was my kind of N64 like introduction. Like I, I was still, I was still playing a lot of super Nintendo back when, when I was a kid, uh, in and around that time as well, because like, I mean, like I didn't, have very many super nintendo games growing up certainly not like the ones that we talk about today so uh yeah it was a lot of like there's a lot of golden eyes a lot of uh diddy kong and it was a lot of mario kart in in 96 97 super nintendo is still going strong and we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that a little bit but we've also gone gone through um you know some nintendo powers from the time and stuff and they're still big on uh super nintendo so well, but they're also at this time encouraging you to get in or get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that was very important at the time, yeah. I, I remember oh. playing like a lot of like Donkey Kong Country 3 and like Super Mario RPG in, in that year. I, like I think in Yes. I think Mario RPG came out in ninety six too, which was like Yep. I loved that game. That game was so awesome. It would have been if it was out in like almost any other year before that, it probably would have been like a game of the year. But I mean, like you kind of when you go up against Mario sixty four, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I I played a lot of that uh, in in ninety six too. That was a a wicked title. Yeah, so they're still putting out uh, you know some powerhouse games there at the end. So I, it's okay that you brought it down a little bit um, because before we do our. Um, our flashback segment I actually have a bit of a 1996 news item that's uh it's contemporary that we could get into. So I don't think I mentioned this in the first episode, but in early 1996, the Unabomber was captured oh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. just this uh, past week, the Unabomber was found dead in, in his jail cell, I guess. Uh, I bet um, he was pissed off when the Nintendo 64 was released. <laughs> yeah. The first 64-bit console, I mean, that's a lot of technology. Graphics have come too far. Does, the, <laughs> does that guy have, like, a Netflix show? I, I can't remember. Uh, I was looking at it. He had, I think he had a, I think there was a documentary, but I saw there was actually a, like, an HBO miniseries oh, okay. where he was played by Paul Bettany. That sounds good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I, think I it's called. I Man wanted Hunt. to say I I think I might have watched that. I remember watching something, but I couldn't remember if it was him or if it was like Ted Bundy or something. And I I got them mm. confused. And he had like a little cabin in the woods or something, right? He didn't live by anybody. Yeah, he, Am I he had of the a right cabin. Mm-hmm. They okay. got his cabin. You know, I think CD based gaming and its consequences have been a disaster for the <laughs> video games industry. <laughs> Do you work on your own manifesto? Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to uh... return to cartridge. <laughs> I think it's going to be would have wanted. Well, probably not. But... He's, probably, no, he's I... probably reading all the bears and the deer is his manifest. Curse these, curse these CDs. Yeah, I wonder what he thought about blast processing. We get it to our actual flashback segment. But first, I did want to bring up again all the nice um, reviews that we've gotten. And... I thought, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to maybe share one. We can start sharing some each episode. So, uh, our first review we ever got, our first five-star review, and people, please go leave some more. Uh, we've gotten a lot of great ones, but it's from our pal Corey, actually, who said, The best N64 podcast on the internet, bar none, a must-listen, five thumbs way up, almost as revolutionary as the council itself. Wow. Strong words. What a I suck up, uh, Corey. Um, that's impressive. Yeah, I don't know where you got that extra <laughs> thumb. Th- that might be a, a Unabomber related thing. <laughs> 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 so let's get into it. Let's, uh, let's flash back to November 11th through the 25th, 1996. The Macarena Bayside Boys Mix is finally unseated. From the from the top spot of the Billboard Hot 100, by No Diggity by yes. Black Street, which <laughs> reigns as number one for all of November. So that's finally a new king has been crowned. Time, nice. Um, a lot of songs that we've had in the previous week are still holding strong, but also entering into the top five, we have the song "Mouth" by Meryl Bain Meryl Bainbridge. Nobody by Keith Sweat and Athena Cage, and Unbreak My Heart by Tony Braxton. I don't know if any of these songs, some of these songs I had to like go back and listen to. Obviously, I remember Unbreak My Heart. That's a yeah, that's a classic. But it was like yeah, Tony, Tony Braxton was the only name I even recognized <laughs> after Black Street. I was like, who? What? Are these that like country like, artists or something? <laughs> that was like on my uh, work approved playlist when I worked at Insomnia Cookies, so I heard it like every night for a few years. <laughs> I still hear it at, uh, at work today. It's, uh, yeah. It's actually one that I look I look forward to. You know, even those work songs you just hate hearing, but I love that <laughs> yeah. song. Uh, so <laughs> for the top albums, we have, we have some interesting ones, because they are uh, The Best of Van Halen Volume 1. 
an anthology yeah. three by the Beatles, so old, old songs, and then uh, but then we had the Don Caluminati, the Seven Day Theory by Machiavelli, aka Tupac. Uh, I think this is then because he in September he was killed, so this is like his first like posthumous release. Mm. So. We gave that a listen. That was that was pretty cool. I haven't listened to a lot of actual like Tupac in my life, so I, yeah, I have cool. to admit, I'm, I'm not I'm not like a giant Tupac fan, which which is like I don't know. I I really like Biggie Smalls, and and it's not because I like pick a side. I just I don't know his, his stuff. Like <laughs> the only songs of his I really dig have like like Dr. Dre or something in it. That's like mm-hmm. another entity that makes it cool. You know, he's okay. I don't know, he's okay. I think he's the man. He's awesome. Yeah. I think most people do, to be fair. I think there's just something wrong with me, and probably a lot, actually. No, I'm with you. I, I actually, it was, growing up, I never, I mean, both of them actually are kind of strange, because, like, them, I, like, don't really remember mm. these, like, them being as popular. I, I feel like I got more into, like, some of the rap that came after them, basically. Yeah, uh, me too. Because I was real little when they were, like, at the at the pinnacle, you know, but yeah. uh, I I did end up gravitating more towards Biggie, I guess, when I heard him. But I I like the idea of like taking an extreme side now. You know how that was such a. <laughs> 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 I mean, if I was taking an extreme side, I'm sorry, it would be Biggie every yeah. day, all day. I mean, I guess uh, <laughs> as evidenced by their lyrics, he was more of the gamer between the two. So that's yeah. true. He had Super Nintendo Sega Genesis and, Sega, and Sega Sega Genesis. Nintendo. So the highest grossing films of the time were Ransom, uh, which we just watched. Um, you might find this interesting, actually. It's a it's a Ron Howard movie. Came out the year after Apollo 13, and stars Mel Gibson. And uh, we were we had to, we couldn't find it online anywhere. Actually, I had to get it through other means but it was it was an interesting movie um and then also we had space jam and Mm. star trek first contact so this is a big this is a big time period for me (laughs) yeah space jam was like my favorite movie at at this time at this very moment in time that we're talking about that space jam album wasn't wasn't up there on the chart i had that album with like the monster song and stuff like that, and and I believe I can fly. That was a that mm-hmm. was a sick album, actually. Yeah, yeah I'm expecting it had, the, it had the eagles on it. Y- yeah. Well, it was it was well, Seal. It was, it was. I thought it was R. Kelly. Was it Seal? No, Seal covered "Fly Like an Eagle." R. Kelly oh. did. Oh. Uh, I believe I can fly. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. But I do. I actually like the Seal version more. Well, for I mean, what it's worth, it's Seal. Sorry. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Other notable releases of video games at this time were uh, Sonic 3D Blast, uh, as we discussed earlier, Donkey Kong Country 3. We also had Tomb Raider and Bubsy 3D. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's I good on- stuff. I only bring up Bubsy because it's like we just <laughs> had Super Mario 64, which is like an all-time, you know. <laughs> genre defining game and then a few weeks or a month later or two months later we get it, Bugsy it was 3D. surpassed by Bugsy. <laughs> <laughs> this is also around thanksgiving uh the big the big black friday gift was the tickle me elmo that was the the hottest selling toy you remember you remember that who, People were getting mowed down in storage for that I, I feel like that's <laughs> yes. the first like like big gift that i remember in my lifetime where people were like going nuts over it <laughs> yeah i yeah, like I, I think i had one maybe too i don't know wow that might have been maybe that was for my younger brother i don't know how old is too old to be playing with tickle me elmo never. you have one now uh, <laughs> <laughs> ever uh, you're never too old to give elmo a little tickle Just ask them in Fredericton, where 48 of the bug-eyed beasts were put on sale at a local Walmart. And one of the clerks was sent to hospital after being trampled in the frenzy. Somebody in the crowd yelled, there's the Elmos, and they rushed us. So we didn't talk about this either. This was more of a, I think this kind of died down a little bit in this time period of when we started talking about it. But in the previous 
kind of year leading up to this and then a little bit after was actually the height too of the the oj simpson trial and mm. actually at this period was uh we were watching something where they, they had just found like like a like his shoe or something like that uh at the at the you know they as a piece of evidence and he i guess he took the stand as a hostile witness um so this this was kind of a you know this was an ongoing news thing that kind of came back a little bit and i think there's going to be more um you know more of his trial in 1997 i believe too so that was kind of uh, actually i saw a thing today where someone was asking like what's the first kind of major news event you remember like breaking news event and i don't remember like specific things but this is one of one thing i do really remember as a kid of like going on but i i kind of wasn't really i was very confused about what was actually happening if that makes sense yeah i mostly yeah. recall that the glove didn't fit and so they had to acquit <laughs> yeah but then they the shoe that, what no. about the melted ice cream? I mean, I could go on all day. <laughs> I don't remember the ice cream. I, I feel yeah. like I kind of have like a, a different perspective of that because like I, I obviously I'm from Canada. So like and and it was it was a thing here, no doubt. But it wasn't mm. I don't think as like big of a deal here. So I never really like or, I never really followed it or maybe it just I wasn't paying attention. But I, that was a story that I was just kind of like not not really super familiar of until like years later when I was like, all right, what's up with this OJ thing? Everyone was too busy uh, reading Wayne Gretzky's career stats on Wayne Gretzky 3D hockey. That <laughs> was guess. the big news of the time in Canada. Dude, no the, biggest, for, the biggest no thing in that... OJ Simpson's 3D football, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that game got canceled. I, honestly, the biggest thing that like uh, made me think of or like got me to wonder what this OJ trial was was like, that Roddy Piper match at WrestleMania with Cold Dust, where they were doing like the car right. chase or whatever. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yes, that was inspired by it. yeah, because yeah. that's that's another thing of like I don't the, remember the Bronco all chase. Hey, who says wrestling doesn't make people more culturally literate? Cold Dust is just trying to get out of there. Look at he's running over. He's gonna hit him. He just hit him. He just hit Roddy Piper. This is totally out of hand. Roddy Piper was hit by a car. That was like in ninety. 90- five at wrestlemania right or something because that's the thing about that is i think it was in 96 actually now okay now that we're talking about it because the bronco chase that happened i think in 1994 like late 1994 so it's it's one of those things where i think that is partially why i didn't fully understand it at the time because i was like still like coming together as a human being and like my brain was still forming like (laughs) and so it just be it was a similar thing as well as like the like the Tupac and Biggie was a big news story where like, yeah, I, I was like, my reality was still being shaped around me, <laughs> you know, it all kind of blurs together. I mean, what OJ Simpson went to trial for killing Tupac or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you mentioned wrestling, so I can bring it up again. Uh, the biggest, the biggest thing that came out of wrestling, I was still watching at the, at I was going back and watching at this time was actually Rocky Maivia made his debut at SummerSlam. Wow, uh, you're right. Right around this time, so still looking like a fresh face, uh, baby face, you know. The the old blue chipper. Yeah, exactly. Um, He was the lone survivor in the Survivor Series match, so we're getting a big push for Rocky. Why don't we get into it? Why don't we talk about... McKenna, why don't you tell us about Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey was the first sports title and the first four-player game released for the Nintendo 64. You can play a single game, go through a whole season, or go straight to the playoffs, shoot or pass on offense, and steal or check on defense. But if things get too aggressive, you may find yourself in a fight with another player. Arcade mode allows for fast-paced action, with 3-on-3 teams and no rules, no penalties, while simulation mode allows for a more realistic hockey experience. You can select from 26 NHL teams with players rated based on speed, shooting, strength, and defensive abilities. We were debating, McKenna was debating on whether to say it's the first sports title for N64, because Wave Race 64 
uh, obviously covers oh, a very yeah. iconic and beloved uh, sport of jet ski racing. I think I think yeah, people do that the, for real. The thing that got yeah. me, I you know, it says it in the Nintendo Power, like it says, "Oh, this is the first sports title," and I was like, "We can't argue about- with them." wave race like do you not consider that a sports title it's like where's the line Maybe it's a racing title where's I, I don't the know. line <laughs> drawn between sports I, and racing like i wouldn't consider mario kart a sports title but we were, no. we were talking like <laughs> we would consider a nascar game a sports title i think it's ah. like it's like a, it's it's kind of more of a sports simulation game rather than, although it's really not totally. Yeah, but well, you got to play in simulation so. mode. Yeah. To, they're getting closer to mechanics that are attempting to like <laughs> best simulate the sport rather than arcadey fun. Although there's still certainly an element of that in this game. Like the whole idea with all the stats and stuff like it, you, you can play as real players in a league. So I, I, I kind of understand the perspective. Hey, there's stats in Wave yeah. Race. If, like, if their like definition of sports is up, like there's a league of. for it, then yes, this is the first sports title. But I, I don't know, yeah. man. I feel like I feel like racing on a jet ski, <laughs> you're doing laps, there's heats. Seems kind of sportsish to me. It's pretty sportsy to me. Yeah. Well, same you know, same thing with uh Mortal Kombat uh and Killer Instinct, you know, that's the sport of uh martial <laughs> arts. True martial arts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What about uh, flying planes? Is that not a sport? <laughs> uh, that's a hobby. Come on, yeah. <laughs> uh, Andy. We brought career. you on. You're gonna. You're our. Um, you're a hockey expert. Um, well, Is that fair to say? <laughs> um, I I know m- maybe more than the average Joe about hockey. I wouldn't say I'm an expert. I, in fact, in fact, yesterday I tweeted out my displeasure. With our new the Cal, so I'm from Calgary. We have an NHL team called the Calgary Flames, and I tweeted out my displeasure with our new head coach. And uh, I was like, I said something along the lines of like, "This guy, that's our new head coach, ran our power play last year, and our power play stinks." And I, I was wrong. I was he ran our pe- our penalty kill, and oh uh, our gosh. penalty kill was awesome. And this big Flames account replied to me. It was like, "No, dude, you're wrong." And then and and I was like, "Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry." And then a bunch of geeks came on, and they were like, "Dude, dude like." Do some research before you tweet, bro. Like, come on. And so this is I, I was my yeah. confidence was, was actually shattered a little bit. I, I deleted a tweet, which I never almost do. So I, I'm I'm a little bit uh I respect I, your I, integrity. And I knew I was coming on to, to talk hockey today and be positioned as as kind of an authority. And I and I have to admit I, I felt a little rattled after that after that uh, transaction yesterday. This is your chance to make up for it. This is the redemption. I, right I, here. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I can sound really clever about hockey 3d <laughs> hockey specifically so yeah let's do it you're a you're a lifelong fan i wouldn't say i'm a lifelong I, you know what this is probably around the time when i kind of started becoming more of a fan and and i think that's the the case because um the calgary flames they won the stanley cup when i was born and after that oh. they they stunk for like a decade and so this is right <laughs> this is right in the middle of of the muck in in the Calgary Flames, so like they were just a terrible team. I was going through the roster on uh, on Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey, and it's it's hilarious to see who's on the Calgary Flames. It's actually hilarious to see who's everywhere. But yeah, this is this is kind of around the time when I started paying more attention to to hockey because you know obviously my dad's a big hockey fan. My a lot of my family are big hockey fans. My my brother played hockey, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna watch this sport. That's cool. Were yeah. you were you playing like in terms of like uh, I know there's other I think there's other like more bigger h- hockey games. Am I not wrong? Are you yeah, more, are I, you familiar with like the genre? I guess. Yeah, I I had um like like NHL like EA Sports NHL was a thing at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I would play that. Although I never played NHL. 94 which was supposed to be the best one i i like I super had, nintendo uh, right i, I want to say it's on like the the genesis i don't even know if it was on super nintendo maybe it was i don't know but mm. um but so i never really played that game and i and i mostly played yeah i mostly played ea sports from uh you know basically i was like 
one of my first hockey games. Like even even Wayne Gretzky, I kind of I always kind of viewed it as more of like an arcade style game rather than like a more, I guess, tra- traditional. Uh, what did you uh, like a sim almost? Yeah, no, I guess I, I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, no, that's actually a stupid thing to say. It's three v three. It's like, it, I, but I think the licensed teams is what makes all the difference here. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I don't think you're wrong. Like, it is. You know, it's more. It's more of like a simulation in its own way. Um. Then, then it, it was it, like I almost thought of it as like the NFL blitz of of hockey games. You know, and like that was yeah. a great game. Uh, a lot more fun, I thought, than like the Madden games or whatever. But yeah, this is uh, I, w- I was pretty familiar with with different hockey games, although I will say eventually my computer was so bad at my house when I was a kid that I couldn't play the games anymore. So I just like simmed them all and I was like GM. So I had like my own GM mode. So <laughs> that's take that for what you will. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I would always like create myself and like I was a star forward and one like the MVP every year. And I was like, yeah, you did it again. Great. <laughs> was it, you? it was literally you. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I it. created myself. I created my dad. I created my brother. We were all there. Oh, I, that's I sweet. The, <laughs> the family team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is a lot more like you mentioned uh blitz or um, uh, McKenna and I went down, we were down at the arcade and we got to actually play this. And, uh, it was we also played a little bit NBA Jam and it's certainly a lot more in line with, you know, those sort of titles. I mean, I actually feel like not identical, but like very familiar to each other. They had like the same controls, same same <laughs> yeah. buttons, you know, same buttons to pass and shoot. Pass and shoot, yeah. Move. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we played some down at the arcade, but um uh well well, Connor, you and I got to play a handful of this together too. H- had you ever played this game before? Um, no, I had not played this game before. You know, I've played, uh, you know, I played like NHL games and whatnot, and uh, especially with uh, games prior to this, I played uh, quite a few on the Sega Genesis. But this one was different. You know, this was hockey in three D. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, it really changed <laughs> the game. Yeah. Uh, I know what the first thing I noticed about that is uh, the puck being uh, like a gold flashing light. Yeah, Yeah, that really helped me because, you know, the 3D, it was so otherwise it was so overwhelming how three dimensional it was. I couldn't see what was going on, you know. Let me me tell you guys a story about America. And I don't know if it's it's around this time, but I can't tell you exactly what it was. But uh Hockey, obviously, has always been bigger in Canada than it has been in the States. You guys have basketball, MLB, and especially NFL ahead of it. And so in order to uh, to attract more viewers to to the NHL, the NHL did a, uh, let's call it like a focus group research, asking Americans, why don't you like to watch hockey? And one of the reasons that they got was that a lot of Americans found the puck hard to follow on the ice. So I, I want to say it's either this year or next year, but like very soon we're coming into the era where I want to say it was like Fox or something like that. Whoever had the rights to, to NHL games in America at the time, they added this blue streak that would follow the puck behind <laughs> behind it everywhere. And, and it was in replay so that you could see where the puck was going. And like sometimes they'd like special effect it into the TV as well. Whoa. I wish I could remember what it was called, but it was like, the most gimmicky, crappiest looking thing that you've ever seen in your life and had, I'm sure, the complete opposite effect of attracting viewers because you would look at it and just be like, what is this nonsense, this silliness? So I, I always that's one of my first hockey memories, actually, is that stupid blue trailing star thing. It yeah. sounds kind of sweet. I yeah, mean, I, the- I'm sure I'd like it now. <laughs> but I, I know my dad hated it. He used to always complain about it. They still uh, do that for some sports now. Like, uh, they do that, like, if you watch football, they're, like, drawing crap all over the screen. And the visuals in this game were kind of evocative of those replays where they're, like, <laughs> just, like, their CGI beams <laughs> flying all over the place. They should uh, show all replays with N64 graphics. Oh, yeah. I think that, w- <laughs> I I that would be some sports. I would be closer right. to achieving my dream of living in a 64-bit polygonal world. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, if if hockey was like this, I would be 
I'd be into it all the time. Yeah, well, it's, hey, it's, I mean, it's they not still, that I, they're still not attracting that many viewers in the States now. So, I mean, they should they should look into this, perhaps. I think a lot of sports are struggling right now, too, though. You know, you, there's all these like baseball rule changes recently. Yeah, they just the, can't compete with gaming. Gaming is really like the the pinnacle of sports. It's a like. time of choice for Americans. <clears throat> Well, you look know, at this game. Yeah, it beats the pants off a of real hockey. Yeah, I, I, I think, <laughs> I think that's like kind of legit. To be honest, like I, I don't think that's like far off the mark. Well, to be, to be totally honest, like I actually, I mean, I don't, I don't dislike um, hockey or anything, but I just, I don't watch a lot of sports. Mm-hmm. Um, I've only been playing this game a little bit, but I actually, <laughs> I love this game. I'm so into this game now. Yeah. Uh, I was just playing. I just the other night. I mean, uh, we were just hanging out, and I was playing Tears of the Kingdom still. And I was like, okay, I need to take a break. And I just loaded up my season that I have going on this game, and just played a game. And it was, I'm like, I'm addicted to it a little bit now. And when we were well, at yeah. the arcade, it was like one of the best games we played when we were there. What season mode are you doing? I think I didn't know what I was picking at first, and I picked just like the arcade season mode. But basically, you just play against every team. So mm-hmm. I've I, won I, I every time so far. I kind of wanted to restart because I didn't. I kind of just was like testing it out one night, and I I said I think I asked Nico like, what um, I was like, oh, what team should I pick? And he was like, oh, you should pick a. Uh, anaheim or whatever the ducks you know (laughs) oh boo and i was like okay sure i was like i don't know you know i don't know anything about the teams other than i know who you like (laughs) um i know the ducks from the mighty ducks and i know chicago (laughs) This, this is an interesting time actually because since this game came out there is let's see one two three four five six seven I think there's like seven teams that have been added to the league and a bunch of teams have moved around. And and this year in 96 was actually, I don't know if you saw it, but there was the, the Phoenix Coyotes are a team this year. And, oh. um, and they I didn't had notice came, this at all. Yeah. Well, I, there's no reason to notice it unless you know the story, which is like they had come from Winnipeg like that season. And this was hot off the heels of the Colorado avalanche coming from quebec city the year before so like canadian hockey fans still hate if i were to say the name to you, gary bettman do you know who that is no no hey, he's, he's the commissioner of the nhl and uh i've actually stolen uh, a bunch of his like mannerisms when i'm trying to sound like like a doofus on on the podcast before <laughs> uh so, and canadian hockey fans hate this guy because he took like two teams and and Calgary and Edmonton almost lost their teams as well in the late nineties. So like this was this was the era when people were just like calling for this guy's head and like everyone hates him. But uh yeah, if you if you notice there's only like the six Canadian teams left in the NHL at this point, and it, it stayed that wow. way for like decades. They now just, we have Winnipeg back, so there you go. They gotta get it back all down back to America. Yeah. How else <laughs> are you gonna appeal to Americans? I, I I mean, really, like, and there's this was um, not too far off as well from expansion <laughs> into what you would call very untraditional hockey markets. So, like, the Florida Panthers are a pretty new team at this point. They've been in the league for three years. Tampa Bay Lightning are a pretty new team at this point. I think three years again, and they're getting into like Texas and they're getting into like California, like the Mighty Ducks. So like they mm-hmm. they were expanding into these areas that you wouldn't necessarily think of as you know hockey hotbeds, but and some of them are now like uh, like Tampa Bay is a huge hockey place. Texas is, um, uh, I mean like California, L.A., uh, San Jose, all those are like big hockey towns now. So it's a very interesting time in the NHL in the hockey world. They definitely had they had a chance to to break through. I think the '90s is probably the most the most like in my life that I like conceived of caring about hockey. Cause there was, you know, <laughs> all those movies and stuff like that. Um, well, what about you guys? Like Connor, Connor, you, you like hockey. You watch much hockey. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. M- McKenna, you play soccer, which is kind of like earth hockey. I think 
field hockey is like earth hockey. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh yes i i was a sports kid growing up but uh mostly stuck to watching i didn't even watch uh i mostly watched soccer i didn't even watch that much of the other sport i played which was basketball Mm. except for i i went to some games in person i think going to basketball Mm. games in person is a ton of fun uh but i don't think i've ever really watched a a real hockey game i've I've watched movie hockey games (laughs) there's um there's an episode of gilmore girls where they go to a hockey game (laughs) i don't think they show very much of it i think it's mostly like they're they're filming them sitting in the stands (laughs) i remember on friends they used to go to rangers games all the time wow um they played they played hockey on top of the quick stop in clerks (laughs) <laughs> yeah. and, and of course i remember the the hockey demons and uh dogma so that was that was another entry point for me was the films of kevin smith also big in the 90s oh man oh, <laughs> so i was man. like oh that one guy likes hockey it must be cool yeah you know, the- i think i actually watched some hockey because of kevin smith too actually at some point <laughs> yeah i don't think i ever went as far as watching but i i went as far as to be like yeah like that's a cool that's a cool sport I don't know. Um, I, yeah, would, I, th- I would love to take you guys to a hockey game, man. It, it it's a good it's a good time. I bet it's a good it, it, it seems I fun. I go to, I go to at least like a few every year, and it's still like <laughs> it's, it's a good time. It's that great scene in Chasing Amy where Ben Affleck has the fight at the. Okay, we're not going to talk about <laughs> the Kevin Smith films, but no, I think one of the only hockey. I think I think I can name two hockey players, and one of them is the namesake of this game who's right a- as we mentioned uh his stats are like enshrined in this game i thought that was amazing where there's a whole that was, ingest- so sh- that was such a strange feature of this game but it's like kind of <laughs> cool it kind of brings me back to like the days of early dvds where like i don't think i think they had all this cartridge <clears throat> space and availability and they like almost didn't know what to do with it but it's kind of like a night like before the internet is as commonplace as it is today, this is kind of like a nice feature to have that you just have the entirety of Wayne Gretzky's career stats included in this game, but it's only Wayne Gretzky and you just, <laughs> it just seems like such a strange addition to this game, but it's welcome nonetheless. It, it's very cool. I'm like, Wayne Gretzky's stats, like when you look at them in the context of like the game, it's just like, oh, yeah, cool, this guy's a lot of points or whatever, but like, I would I would say points. that Wayne Gretzky's the best athlete in any sport, like the most dominant best athlete in any sport in my lifetime, like that I can think of. And, and frankly, he was doing this like before I was born, like his, his prime is in the 80s. But like this dude has like like over 2000 points for for like his career, which if you get a thousand points, that's like a major, major milestone, like major milestone. And he's got like. His stats are like unbelievable. Like I, he was so dominant. Like this, no wonder this game is named 3D Wayne Gretzky 3D hockey. This guy was unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know enough about sports in general to challenge your claim. So, but I'll as play. good as he is, it still just seems like such a strange feature. Like it's like oh, I've been playing this game all day. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Can, like, take a break and like you know have a snack or something oh i can keep the game going just scroll through some wayne gretzky stats <laughs> i you know what if it was called like 3d hockey i i may be like that that's a bit weird to see wayne stats up there but i you know wayne, wayne gretzky's 3d hockey i i could see that well isn't that a big selling point too is that they yeah. like license not just him but the other players and all the teams and stuff too so it's definitely a so, bit of marketing you know what was the other player that you know because i i had a player in mind and i want to see if it's the one that you're thinking of. uh the other reason i know the other player i know is because i saw someone once do a ranking of all every mario game and they okay. included in their ranking mario lemieux <laughs> okay something that, or other hockey <laughs> that's who i was thinking of but i thought you'd know it because of the super mario so, yeah. so for context, <laughs> Mario Lemieux is probably like just behind Wayne Gretzky in terms of like how were they incredible were the same he was. team. They were like teammates. They, right? they weren't. They they were teammates oh. on Team Canada at one point, um, yeah. but they never 
the Wayne Gretzky mostly played actually Wayne Gretzky played in Edmonton, which really sucks. Cause that's like, you know, uh, two hours away from Calgary and Edmonton won a bunch of Stanley cups and Calgary only beat Wayne Gretzky once to win a Stanley cup, mm. which, which is too bad. But Mario yes. Lemieux played in Pittsburgh his whole career and he, he actually had cancer. Um, so he, he didn't play a lot of games, but he, oh. I, I, this is ballparking, but I think he has like 1600 points and less than a thousand games, which is like, unbelievable as well so so mario's he's he's pretty amazing that's only a recent name i learned too like other than that mm-hmm. my hockey knowledge is yeah i can't i couldn't yeah, tell yeah. anybody um but what you about this ho- you don't know any hawks players no not even the, the i was living i think i was living in chicago the year when did they win yeah they won the stanley cup it was they, they won a few they won in what 2010 2012 i think yeah. another i think they won three I was living in Chicago all these years and I couldn't tell you. <laughs> okay. I had some friends who were into it, but yeah. Yeah, they were huge at that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're about to be huge again. This is a sidebar, but they're drafting a, a player this summer and he's going to be like amazing. He's going to be all like right. the guy that you, that he's going to be like the next Sidney Crosby. Probably not that you guys know who that is, but. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, do you know who Sidney Crosby is? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Grow Hawks. Yeah, I'm going to get into him just so we can have a rivalry, maybe. And maybe yeah. Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey will in- ignite something within me. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but no, I legit, I'm I'm into this game. Like, uh, I I mean, I already really liked, uh, like, Blitz and, and NBA Jam I'm really into. So uh, it's just like, I think the fact that it is arcade and it's not like as simulation is what does it for me. It's like, um, there's only three buttons well on the n64 actually they had they assigned things to the different c buttons but on the arcade you just have three buttons and the way you like Mm -hmm. check would be you'd press like all the buttons at once or whatever um and there's just something about that simplicity that i can really you know wrap my head around and get really into the game uh, I recall and, and, you yeah. saying, like, where's the uh, button to start a fight a few times? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I learned, I learned that. So if you, so as McKenna mentioned, I guess we must have had arcade mode. We never did simulation mode. So in arcade right. mode, you can check and trip people and there's no penalty, but a fight can break out if you do it too much. So it was always I, you who was fighting. It's pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> I usually have won, except when we played at the arcade. I didn't even get a hit in. I just got my my ass beat. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I just mash all the buttons. But I love (laughs) I love that aspect, too. They're throwing bombs, which is it's not as like over. I think there is there are later ones that get as ridiculous as Blitz. But um, this wasn't that ridiculous. But I do like that the fights happen. That's something that doesn't really happen in Blitz other than like you can keep tackling after the play mm-hmm. but i love in this that you just start throwing haymakers <laughs> dude th- this game turns into like uh, most hockey games turn into like mortal Kombat when you actually start fighting there's like uppercut moves you can block you can do like tons of cool stuff i remember like there is like a separate control list for like when you're fighting i want in like nhl 98 <laughs> or something like that it's like doo, doo, you could like throw up your you could give like a like a roundhouse kick throwing or something. Hadoukens. Yeah. <laughs> so I was looking at the Wikipedia page for this game today, and there's just a little section where it says that originally fatalities were announced for the fights yes. in this game, and they ended up scrapping that. But I was just Boo. like, I'm going to kill you, Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. this, ha- this is one of the last games that Atari made in house, too ever really yeah they you know i believe they're sold like a few years later so that that name like still gets kicked around too but it does, it's, it's kind of meaningless exi- right? they still exist as a company and they would publish games i think after this but they were only around a few more years and i think they only made like a handful of games after this and you know they were one of the first video game developers so well noteworthy another milestone i f- i'm pretty sure we yeah so this is the first game you can play four player on n64 oh yeah that's huge and it's that's so the cool big selling point of the n64 it's so cool how it works too where you can play you can play you know one two four and depending on which 
controller port you use you could play against your friend you could play you know um we were playing co-op games against the computer you could play two on two we did a little bit of that actually back on uh uh saint patrick's day (laughs) moss came over and uh our house and him played a good two on two game of it too and that was our first time playing it and it's just i don't know it's it's really fun to play also like co-op and against someone like Mm. basically any setting i feel like it it's fun to play and that's i think that's a big selling point for me to keep going back to it i I agree i I think you said it it's it's simple it's i I actually uh, i have a story that i want to 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 rope into this with how i found it so in in 1996 like late 1996 um pretty much when this game came out actually uh, my my family and I went on a cruise to Alaska, and it was like this like a really awesome cruise ship or whatever. And like we were there for like a week, and this was the first I, I didn't know it at the time, but it was the first N sixty four game I ever played. And although I played the arcade version, um, mm-hmm. but so I I was playing this with like there was a bunch of other kids on this cruise, and so like there's like a little kids room or whatever where they had like some arcade machines. Like they played Little Rascals every single night. Um, <laughs> so we were we were playing like some Wayne Gretzky three D hockey, and it was like simple enough that like a bunch of uh, like eight, nine year olds could be like, oh yeah, cool. Like we were lighting the net on fire, stuff like that. So like, I, I yeah, I, I like as fun as like a, a more realistic sim is, I whenever I play sports games, which isn't very often, I, I like the ones that allow like a bit more like shenanigans, like the nets on, like man, when, when I got scored on the other day and my net lit on fire, I was so chapped and I was like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get it back. And uh, like the brick wall flashing, like there's the like so many wall. great things in this game. There's the ambulance that goes by. Oh man, that ambulance! <laughs> ugh. Still not as outrageous as you know, like Blitz or whatever, but it's just yeah. got enough, yeah, just enough like quirkiness to it. Yeah, you, just... you always then play probably as as uh, the flames, right? I do, I do. <laughs> kind of. Sometimes remember... I play as the Ottawa Senators. They're another team that I grew up liking. Okay. Connor, who are we playing as? I like the Canucks. It? Really? The Canucks? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And and then we were going, me and McKenna were, I will, I, I will just adapt to whoever, you know, whoever's team we're playing with. We were playing uh, Washington, D.C., yep. I'm sorry. Caps. The yeah, Caps. D.C. <laughs> I think we rocked the Blues as well. That was, yeah, the oh, Blues yes. were huge when I was out in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, the St. Louis connection too. Yeah, we never. I don't think we ever did the Hawks, but uh, yeah, I'd, like obvious. I said, I'm. Yeah, it's too obvious, right? <laughs> I always have a hard time in some of these sports games with what team do I pick because I don't have any, you know, specific loyalty unless I can play as like someone cool. Like if I can uh, play as Dennis me Rodman. If, uh, yeah, like I was gonna say that was me <laughs> in like basketball games, like NBA Jam and stuff. I'm like, I don't know who has the coolest logo. So I ended up being like the Orlando Magic because I thought they had a cool logo. Cool logo, cool team name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we move on, anybody have any final thoughts on Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey they wanted to get in? Yeah, I did have a, a big issue with this game, and that oh. was the way it handled the, these save states. So I'm all about the leaderboards. Mm-hmm. I feel what's the point of me <laughs> playing this game if it's not to permanently enshrine my name somewhere deep <laughs> into the cartridge it makes me feel like i'm working towards something and i actually really liked the way it handled leaderboards at first when we play two people on a team it ranks us as a team and individually there was a lot of uh, it just yes. ways that it handled that sort of thing but i could not believe that you can't save onto this game that i've never seen a nintendo 64 game that used this peripheral that you i guess it's not really a peripheral the the memory pack that you had yes. to the controller. There, there were a number of games that used it though. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think, I think a lot of the more uh, mainline Nintendo games tried to avoid that. But, but this they... is one of the big advantages that they had over the CD ROM based games is that I can get it. I can nail it right onto the cartridge, bring it over to my buddy's house and we can play in mm-hmm. the same save state. No, unfortunately, this is a controller pack one, but we did we did figure that out. So if we played again, you know, we only lost one game, I think, right? To, yeah, to I, gotta, time. I gotta bump my score up on that sucker. So that's like I'm starting to climb the leaderboard now on my cartridge because I do have a few wins under my belt. Uh, so nice. seeing myself go up, yeah. 
other than that, any other anybody got any complaints, any concerns? <laughs> Final closing statements on Wayne Gretzky's three D hockey. It feels uh, not fair to complain about this, but I I will say that the uh, announcing or play by play pretty <laughs> uh, pretty pretty lacking. Pretty it's pretty sure. rough. But you know, this is nineteen ninety six. I mean, it was, well, they could have had they could have thrown in a boom shock a locker or two, you know, or like a, a they're throwing bombs or something, like some yeah. some excitement. <laughs> All of them. He does. It's very like it's like the level below. He says like boom and the nets on fire, but he never goes to the heights. That's that's mm-hmm. yeah. That is actually I think kind of goes along with what I was saying about it compared to blitz and and stuff is like. The it, I think it could increase the uh, intensity level, just one yeah. match. Yeah, yes. Seems I think a lot of the game is like that. Like the like the music is all serviceable and fun, but it's all serviceable. Um, but it yeah, it's just as a presentation, it lacks a little bit. But as just a game, I think it's really, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's I I'm really into it. <laughs> so let's move on to M- McKenna. Tell us about Killer Instinct Gold. Killer Instinct Gold is a home console port of arcade fighting game Killer Instinct 2. It is the first Nintendo 64 title developed by big second party developer Rare. The game features 2D characters who who fight in 3D arenas with the camera rotating as the fighters move throughout the scene. You can perform thousands of combos, but you'll also be able to use combo breakers allowing for more strategic fights. There's also a rock, paper, scissors element to the combo breakers. Unlike other fighting games where you have to defeat your opponent in two rounds with health being reset after each, in Killer Instinct, you'll have to be the first to knock out two bars of health. So Connor, you're back once again, our, our fighting game aficionado. You're also a bit of a bit of a rare head too we could say that's right it's a combination of two of my favorite things with fighting games and rareware Mm. absolutely um andy did you get a chance to to check this out at all i i did not find the means to play it sure sure. i i uh watched uh, i watched some videos uh i i was like kind of familiar but not Mm. not overly with it um you know, I I would actually say like I'm a I'm a big rare guy as well. Like I I think almost almost everything they made from like ninety two to two thousand two was like amazing. Um, so I don't know why I never really checked out Killer Instinct, but but I have to admit I didn't I didn't as a kid, and I think that's because I was still kind of like oh, okay, Street Fighter is my game. Maybe I'll mm-hmm. rent Mortal Kombat, and and this kind of looked like it, it kind of looked a little bit too much like Mortal Kombat for me as a kid, and I never really went back to it after for I, I don't know why, but uh, this is the one. This is one of the few rare titles that to me was just kind mm-hmm. of uh, I don't know, slipped by me. Yeah, I didn't know if you were even big into fighting games. I guess so. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. that's the other thing is like not not overly. I I would say this at. I think around this time, actually, as well, my my brother got a Sega Saturn and uh, mm. I don't know why we got that, but like we got Virtua Fighter and I thought that that game was like pretty cool. So I, it's not like I didn't like fighting games. I don't I don't know. There was something like that just seemed a little bit like Street Fighter 2 was cool because you have all the cool characters. Virtua Fighter was cool because it was in 3D. And this one was just kind of like, uh I think I think to me it just it looked a little bit too much like Mortal Kombat and I I never got a chance to to go back although on your recommendation I did check out some of the music and it is pretty the rare just doesn't is miss so sick yeah they don't miss yeah yeah I was saying the music in this one was Robert Beanland who worked on some of the music for Donkey Kong Country as well as Goldeneye but I think he's really best known he was a writer for rare he wrote all of conquer's bad fur day and voiced the title character wow um, i think that yeah the 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 connection with this and world combat it's pretty clear that's what they're trying to evoke yes um but you know what really makes this game unique is the big combos the big ultra combos and the breakers and whatnot um but i think this game actually had a really cool as much as it was trying to evoke Mortal Kombat, I think it had a really interesting visual design, specifically Killer Instinct Gold. The um, 
and or Killer Instinct 2 with the combination of the um you know sprite the 3D uh models turned into sprites and then th- but imposed on 3D backgrounds it has this kind of neat diorama look and I love I it like I love vi- it yeah. a lot of the visuals have aged actually really well for the Nintendo 64 game yeah, I, I kind of I pretty much what both of you were just saying is sort of how I feel, how I felt about it, where like, I think when I first saw it, I thought, yeah, it's it's clearly like kind of aping a bit from Mortal Kombat. They ha- they don't have fatalities, but they have mm. they essentially have fatalities and stuff like that. And I sort of got the vibe. But then, yeah, as we started pl- actually playing it, I was like, like, you know, Mortal Kombat has a very unique, distinct visual style, but playing this it does as well with what you're saying kind of those mix of um 2D and 3D which i think there are some pretty awesome games from this time period that you know haven't re- like that vibe almost can't be replicated or or it's you know some people are starting to but this one's got like a lot a, of ninjas too like mm, mortal kombat yes ninjas for sure i mean if they if they kept going on they probably would have made some more uh jago clones or whatever <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, there was something about this one uh similarly where like well you you mentioned like all the the combos and the breakers and stuff like that. Like we were reading about that and it's similar to me with other fighting games where like I just can't wrap my head around that stuff totally. Like I, but I felt like from just like playing this game a little bit, I was like starting to comprehend some of it, but like, you know, the beyond like just like the basic thing like i still can't sort of wrap my head around it but it was enough to get in there and like we beat it on hard mode so like i found this game was actually really accessible for a fighting game like it has a lot of like the the training modes and the practice features were really good for the time like that's Mm -hmm. stuff that they didn't get in fighting games until recently a lot of these combo tutorials and like the ways that they explain the mechanics and you know there's some other there are like other modes too in this game where you can like knock people off and stuff i think that this game specifically actually is a really good fighting game to get get a newcomer in, interested in yeah mckenna what did what did you think about it like <laughs> we we beat it because we started from very easy then we played easy and then we beat we beat it together on normal and i feel like you know we both we both actually i think and we we went to the to the arcade even and played it against each other and, and you were you were beating me like just as much like i feel like we were both pretty even on that do you feel like you got the hang of this game sort of uh not really. Okay. You kept saying that you thought I was getting better, but I was like, I'm just smashing the <laughs> buttons. I think I'm just smashing the buttons faster. Connor, and, like, Connor has said, though, there's a value in that. Randomly, yeah, uh, like, it, it, that's not all totally discounted, man. <laughs> I was like, this is how I used to play Smash. <laughs> okay. And um, I'm not a big fighting games fan, uh, or really just like combat in general. Like, that's... Mm. That's not really the thing I play video games for. Um, but I, I got a little frustrated at times with this as we were going up in difficulty. And, uh, you know, we got to the final boss and he started regaining his health. And I was like, yeah, how am I supposed to do this? <laughs> you but guys we, did really like... well, all things considered. How <laughs> You guys got to hard? You beat hard mode? No, I we did normal, I realized. Yeah, me and McKenna beat it on normal. You and I beat it on hard, though, and I feel like... I feel like I did okay when we were because we. That's were, not too. That's that's not too shabby. Even normal, I think a lot it gives a lot of people dude, challenge. There were some of those fights that were really there. That guy Glacius. Yes, the guy he sucks. Jago's tough. The boss regaining his health is definitely tough. But I actually really liked how they um, doled out the arcade endings like piecemeal. When we first beat it, and it's like. There was like no ending, and it's like beat it on a higher difficulty to see more. But each difficulty, they give you a little more of the ending. I was really pissed at first about that, but ultimately, <laughs> I think it was a really good motivator. It, it got us. It's to, a smart play, yeah. No, so here's how it goes: you beat it on very easy, and they're like, they give you nothing for that one. They say you're progressing. 
try beating it on easy. I'm like, okay. So then we beat it on easy and they're like, you're getting better. Beat it on normal to get an ending. And it's like, what? <laughs> And, and then, then we you got get the one, ending. And there's one you get one scene in normal and then we did hard you get a little another extra little oh, scene. Yes. And I we think they a, dole out more, but I don't think we were able to get very hard. There's very hard and then like master or something which uh, I'm oh, pretty satisfied, no. but th- uh, this is this is not a game that I will probably go back to and be like I want to beat the harder mode, but this was one like when we went to the arcade, I was like, well, we definitely got to play some of this. And I th- I thought it was awesome. Like, so this will be one that I would I will a game that I will totally go back to just for some multiplayer. You know, uh, I, I would I would tend to agree with you, McKenna. Where like the, <laughs> the f- combat games, like specifically like this, aren't necessarily my. I, let me rephrase that. I think like on on the surface, and like I, Connor, I know you're saying like this is a very accessible game. But just like on, on the surface, when when I'm kind of reading about like all the different combos and stuff you can do, that like scares me because like you know when we were talking about like with the with the hockey game, it's like it's simple and it's great, and and that mm-hmm. when I when I'm just like oh my god, there's how many combos? Oh, I, uh, I don't know. So I that, should say to be more specific, this is a relatively uh, accessible entry in a unaccessible genre. Yeah. 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 So to I, give it I some agree. credit, I never, I never was like much good. Even at Street Fighter Two, I was like you. I was mashing buttons, which seemed to it always seemed to work, and it always is rewarding when you can beat someone that actually knows what they're doing by just mashing buttons. That's a good <laughs> feeling. This was actually the end of fighting games, like dominance as like the big video game genre, and uh, to which they have never reach that point again but like you know of course like Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter were huge originally but this is kind of when they're on the I mean coincided with the death of arcades and everything Mm -hmm. and this is well this is also the last Killer Instinct game for that's right it it killed the franchise for uh years uh, until I think 2013 but um you know but there were also problems with this home release the frame like it it got reviewed really poorly at the time it had bad frame rate issues which you really don't want in a fighting game mm-hmm. particularly so it, it it was it was flawed certainly yeah it was not it was not enough to deter me when i was like reading so some of the history is actually i think the first killer instinct they were they said they were going to announce they were going to develop a home port of it for it was like the what was it the 64 the ultra ultra 64. ultra 64 that they were developing that and then that didn't pan out so then they had to port it back to SNES but it was well very well received which i i always thought that seems like a bigger leap back but then mm. apparently this one the transfer from arcade to home was not as good but and I definitely noticed, like, when we were playing at the arcade, it looked much nicer. The music sounded so much better. But it's it's similar to me with, like, like Mortal Kombat, where Mortal Kombat Trilogy, when we were playing it at home, where I, like, once I was actually playing, I didn't really notice the difference and all the, like, technical things. Like, I didn't notice, like, frame rate troubles or things like that. Maybe that's just me, but... I was kind of surprised when I read the reviews that it was actually not as well received because I was kind of getting into it when we were playing it together. Mm. There's one key difference why, which is that it has unlimited continues, which in the Mortal Kombat you had credits, and then if you game over, you got to go back to the start. And I liked in this that um, even when we were fighting a an opponent that was giving us trouble, we could kind of pass it back we were passing it back and forth you know trying it with our own characters and it was mm-hmm. kind of nice because you could kind of like you could kind of take a break you weren't like you know hitting your head against the wall necessarily because you and you were kind of in, we were encouraging each other you know so i found it even though it was almost it was almost like a co-op experience but uh I, I i was definitely into that a little bit more than mckenna i think you were you're feeling like you were banging <laughs> your head crushed. against the wall <laughs> Yeah. But I was like, oh, we can do it, we can do it. <laughs> and we did it. So I kept nice. going. I I don't think if uh if I was playing it on my own, I would not have kept going. For sure. <laughs> and yeah, I like think we fighting game fatigue contributed to some of those poor reviews though. Like 
this game was like a sequel to a game people had seen and i feel like there wasn't enough changes some people felt and things like that you know for sure yeah yeah, there, yeah. i will oh, say I, the old the only thing i know about this game is that one of the characters i remember uh seeing that there's a, a character called saber wolf and i was like that sounds familiar saber wolf, and he's, yeah. he's like an old rare character and i always thought that was really cool to see him like reimagined or whatever so that's my mm-hmm. but i i think like the other thing like that with the fatigue is like i i think like uh and i'm no fighting game expert but like the, i feel like the, like the characters are so strong in like street fighter and mortal Kombat, and it's tough to build up like like not one but like an entire roster of new characters that really kind of make people like really care about them because that i i think like to a to a casual fan like me like i don't like fighting games but i like ryu and i like Blanca and I like Chung Lee and, and like those kind of guys, right? Or like even uh we're talking about um uh who does who does Robin play in Mortal Kombat? Oh, I can't remember his name. Oh um, uh Liu Kang. Liu Kang, thank you. Like yeah. th- those guys, like like I I think that they're sure. they make me want to play a game that I might not otherwise play because I think the characters are cool. And I think like for me, like beyond Saber Wolf here, it was just like ah, like these guys are yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, the previous entry had a raptor as a playable character, and this one got rid of him. So I think that accounts for some of the poor reviews as well. But uh, <laughs> Saber Wolf, I know, uh, was one of Gooey's early mains, right? Yes, I forgot to mention that when we we're talking about our histories. But I actually had the, I I don't know how I came about this, like it, but one of the first games I ever had was uh, Game Boy uh, Killer Instinct. And uh, we we were watching some footage of it. It looks really crappy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, you know it's impressive at the same time. I think yeah, what they sure. what they got of it, like it's like if you ever played Donkey Kong Land, where yeah, it's like, yeah. damn, it's crazy they're able to do this, but it's not legible and like or like good to play. Mm-hmm. So I have a very vivid memory of actually being on a camping trip. Um, so my my dad used to, well. He had, he still does this. He has family down in Oklahoma and he would go down there usually around in the fall and he would usually go hunting with some of his family members. And one time he brought me and I don't know why, cause I was not, I think he never brought me again. Cause I'm not, I'm not the hunting type. Even when, when I was little, mm-hmm. I was like, I want to play video games, you know, but I have a very yeah. vivid memory of of sitting around the fire and I got my game boy and I got a little light and I, and I vividly remember uh saber wolf playing as and spinal who were me and mckenna's main this time around and uh i i remembered that stage in the music with uh, saber wolf stage with the little fireplace in the back kind of the gothic castle situation um and it's so in yeah. this game yes i was and i i was i don't know it kind of it was weirdly both nostalgic but like I was nostalgic for a very specific presentation of this. So talk about a flashback 64. Yeah, hey. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of a, a weird experience, but Andy, you were talking about the, like the characters and, and stuff like that and building up some of these in your fighting game roster. And I think mm. I made the comment, I made the comment to Connor or something that I was like, it feels like, you know, the lore in this or like the characters it's, there's not much to it. And you kind of made the point like like at the time for the other games, like the other big fighting games, that's also kind of true. I feel like there's not really a lot to it. It just kind of facilitates the game. But I guess what kind of then I realized what sort of separated it is that those other series have gone on to have movies and it didn't get a more film. Games. Yeah, that's yeah. Shit. Right. And then the film adaptation of something like Mortal Kombat actually influenced the story of the game. So it's almost yeah, like. Yeah. They were able to flesh it out more, and we know it better in pop culture and stuff because of that. I, I will, I will say this. This other one thing too is like, I think if you're if you're gonna introduce like a whole new roster of of characters, um, you, I, in hindsight, what maybe they could have done is like focus on like the, the dudes like the Raptor or Saberwolf, like those really unique characters, because there's a game that I, that I think of, which is uh, Clay Fighter. And like that, that That's came out, up. which is what I was going to say is probably coming up pretty quick. But like that game, like it, it came, but like it, it, everybody was so distinct and like everybody remembers Mr. Frosty and like, like the, those mm. characters just had a very 
unique quality about them. And I think that what maybe hurts, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to say I'm any expert on this game. I'm not, but just like looking, looking at it from a perspective of someone that maybe passed on it was like, these characters, like they really, really look like Mortal Kombat characters to the point where it's like, well, I might as well just play Mortal Kombat. Mm. They did have so fun stuff like sense. werewolves and skeletons. In yeah, fact, yeah. finals on the cover of the soundtrack, Killer Cuts. He's got one of the best songs. That's true. One of the best yeah. stages, I actually. I like the Glacius song a lot. Uh, was another one I was really into. I did oh, yeah, listen yeah. to Orchid. That was pretty unbelievable. The Orchid, oh. yeah. They had the like total oh. dance mix. McKenna, did you have a favorite song? Uh, probably the spinal one. Just got the the bone xylophone. That that's always a, a good sound. The, yeah, the and Kirk he's up. on the yeah he's on the ship. Uh, that's like the stage classic. where you got all the skeletons in the background just yes. running. That stage is awesome. The best the stage too. Throwing the boat. And when yeah. you win, when you win, you know he turns. He's like, ah! yeah, pretty sweet. Mr. Bones. <laughs> Mr. It Bones, really wouldn't. Yeah. It really wouldn't be a rareware game though without some uh, xylophone. Crazy xylophone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, speak. So speaking of rare too, we mentioned this came out like oh lo- around I think the same week as Donkey Kong Country Three. So like they were, mm. they were hot at this They're point. Hot. You know. Yeah. They're getting I was ready a for... lot of Donkey Kong Country Three at this point. I I still have my cartridge over behind me. McKenna and I, I mean, even actually played a couple levels of we played two levels of that, but we you know we don't have time to play the whole game. But yeah, fun. Those game. two <laughs> games weren't exactly hits, so they weren't that hot at that moment. But true, actually, it's well, true, which is too bad because I think. Well, I, I was about to say I, that they got progressively better. I don't think I can say three is better than two, but like they they're almost as good as each other. I, I, think, I think I think the first one's the best. But... <laughs> I, I like I like wow. my Diddy. I like my Dixie. That's a good combo. Hmm. <laughs> Well, yeah, okay. It's it's maybe they weren't hot, but they were they were definitely um they were they were getting fired up because we'll be uh, don't want to jump ahead, but next year we have some you know I mean some of the great some of the goaties. Yeah, they're about there, to really so. hit their stride for yes. sure. I I can't think of a of a publisher or a, a developer rather that had as many hits in such a short amount of time. As rare, I, 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 yeah, I'm struggling to think of like and like everything they did, even like the games that weren't necessarily like box office, like amazingly critically reviewed. I mean, like this game, or I think uh, this game is a good example. This game's yeah. awesome, actually. Yeah, yeah. like, like <laughs> even, <laughs> even this ones. game, it's just like this is still like pretty sweet, you know. There's a lot of like really cool redeeming qualities, and like man, they just go to another level. It's it's unbelievable. I like when you look back, you're like, how did they, how did they make like banger after banger after banger after banger oh yeah incredible best people on to uh, embark on does anyone have any any final words they want to say on killer instinct gold anything else they want to Maybe get in just that uh there's there's a whole lot of like the game itself has like all the tutorial stuff but we were looking at the nintendo power and it kind of details out all, a mm. lot of the the strategies it just reminds me of like gaming back in the day where you'd have a manual and you'd you'd read through it to get all the good info it's been it's, necessary it's for pretty much every game one we've talked where about there's just like a huge spread of you know how sh- how can you play as the character what she what should you do when you're playing against the character and like i mentioned wow. the rock the rock paper scissors aspect of it there's just this little chart that has oh, like the that rock paper so scissors you know, it's like set. this move cancels like, out this move or whatever and it's like it's oh like, my god, god I, don't even know I will how to never do the remember move. this while i'm playing <laughs> but this is cool to read <laughs> yeah that it the even the um, the box or the um the game manual like had a whole like paragraph discussing like the psychology of fighting games, which I thought was crazy. <laughs> like they oh, really, cool. yeah, they really wanted Mind people games. to like understand, like I kind of appreciate it. Like, like they're trying to reveal to me, like what makes the game so compelling for like fighting, you know, fighting game fans. And I really appreciated that, even though like, I, it's like, I still can't fully get it, but maybe one day I'll get there. I, I, I love honestly, that. I've had such a breakthrough, actually, even I mentioned with Mortal Kombat playing with you, Connor, and you giving some tips 
and then playing this and reading about it and just kind of you know starting from easy and going up where i'm like sort of gaining i've already i've already had like an appreciation for fighting games but sort of a little bit better i've become a little bit more of a fan you know what i mean i don't think the n64 is going to be the console that will get me there but say, still. Maybe, maybe clay fighter will be what really pushes you over <laughs> yeah. your, your so there's fandom I also I don't want to spoil too much, but there are we also played some upcoming fighting games for N64 that have arcade versions that are lesser known. And so I'm not we'll see how it pans out, but there's going to be a weird like early on in N64. There are a handful of fighting games I had never heard of. Um, So we'll see. I don't know. We'll see how it pans out. <laughs> I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that. You are gonna learn mm-hmm. something. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of weird fighting games I remember, like like Mortal Kombat Sub Zero. That was a weird one, and that's probably a popular one. Yeah, the like mythologies or that's coming yeah. up too. So yeah, before we close it all up, we should say our next games we're going to be talking about. We got another two for coming up. Our next episode is going to cover Cruisin' USA and Star Wars: Shadow of Shadows of the Empire. So we've got. <laughs> we've got such that's such a sick combo i feel like uh pretty excited to talk about that andy what would you like would you like to plug what would you like to promote you've got a lot of things <clears throat> um yeah uh you know what just just follow me on twitter i'm at spateri 316 and <laughs> okay <laughs> you will come across all my other stuff there you'll figure it out yeah you'll get uh, there counter how about you i'm also on twitter as well as twitch at counter tonight McKenna? I'm on Twitter at McKenna Games and YouTube at Harvest Gamer McGliz. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm at Gooey Fame. Similar to Andy. You'll you'll figure it out. You'll see the other things. <laughs> uh, our artwork for the show is done by Corey Richmond, who also wrote that lovely review. Uh, let's get some non-friend reviews going. <laughs> um <laughs> We, we actually have some, but please, please keep those coming in. Uh, we'll share more of those on the show. Uh, the music was done by Nico Sylvian. Just a rockin' theme. Uh, mm. If you're listening to this on YouTube, you should like it, subscribe, leave a comment. We might read that on the show. You can follow us on Twitter at Flashback64Pod. And if, if you want to email us, you could do that too. We're not, we're not opposed to email. We're uh, flashback64pod at gmail.com. And we also have a Discord, which has been pretty cool. We've got we've got some people. Oh, we had some great. It's been good seeing some of the uh, the magazine posts with the reviews for mm-hmm. some some. I think it was was it an Australian magazine. We've got I believe it's Kai who's in our Discord sharing that stuff. So a lot mm-hmm. of good N64 uh, talk going on in the Discord. Uh, but that's going to be in the link in the description. Um, otherwise, no, I, I, you know what? Maybe I'll do that. If someone actually, if someone comments and expresses interest, because I, we found this out with actually the Zelda, Zelda dungeon. We opened a PO box, which 10 years ago got a lot, but nowadays people aren't sending stuff in the mail as much anymore. So we didn't get as much. And so there's got to be the interest, but if someone has interested enough to go and leave a comment or send us an email that they would send us something in a P.O. box, I might one day consider opening a P.O. box. I do All right, make your voice is heard. <laughs> <laughs> At least email us. I think email is the <laughs> is the step you got to take. When did email really like really take off? I know it was like made back in I think the 70s or something. When was that like the you know the thing uh you know when did you've got mail 1998 you've got okay. mail came <laughs> yeah. out. that was just when email was probably enough of a cultural thing that i know. always feel like the email and the macarena to me go hand in hand same kind of time frame same kind yeah. of vibe oh people were certainly emailing in 1996 but anyway uh connor andy thanks for thanks for joining us it was great to have both of your respective expertise thanks for allowing me yeah thanks (laughs) you're allowed back anytime (laughs) (laughs) 
Ultra Combo! Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> a little post-production uh, on that. 